Being a Queen fan in recent months has been interesting. We have seen people from all ages show their appreciation for the band, which has been wonderful to see. And due to this, Queen have experienced a resurgence in popularity, with people singing their songs, collecting Queen albums, and doing whatever a fan does when they adore a musical group. And folks, this has got me thinking and reflecting on Queen, and one of the main questions I've been asking myself is, what is Queen's demographic, or target audience? So with that said, let's answer this question. So come and get me. The subject of Queen's demographic has been in discussion for countless years as Queen were and still are different when compared to other groups and artists. Furthermore, Queen have been around for nearly half a century, so their demographic has changed over time. When you look at Queen in the 70s, prior of Bohemian Rhapsody, they were new and enigmatic. They were before their time as you see Freddie Mercury with his long hair and painted black fingernails. And how could I forget the music? You had Seven Seas of Rye, Killer Queen, and so on. What I'm trying to say is that they were before their time, and because of this, people of older generations were put off by how strange they looked and how mysterious the music was. However, young adults at the time were more accepting of something new, and that is exactly what Queen offered. Later down the line, Queen released Bohemian Rhapsody, their operatic masterpiece, along with a music video which would launch the MTV age. And by the way, Bohemian Rhapsody kinda plays a huge part in the subject of Queen's relationship with their demographic, so let me explain. The song allowed for exposure, and even though the song was deep in meaning, that did not really put people off the song, because the song was so popular, and they just enjoyed the song for what it was, an operatic masterpiece that was way before its time. Queen grew and became more popular, with their ever-growing demographic not far behind. As we go through the rest of the 70s, Queen's demographic continued to grow, and this is mainly due to Queen indeed mixing genres and still seeming ahead of their time, although things were toned down slightly. Queen took less risks with their music and albums, especially when compared to A Night at the Opera. You can see even through Freddie Mercury's appearance later on in the 70s that his hair isn't as long and he has lost the black fingernails. It was as if Queen were changing and therefore becoming less bizarre. Nevertheless, Queen still maintained traits from earlier that decade, due to them still wanting to keep that Queen magic, so they don't forget what they originally were. It is not until now, the 80s, that we see Queen's demographic spread to pretty much everyone. And this is because Queen were at their most popular, with their hit album, The Game. You had hits such as Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and Another One Bites The Dust, which took the world by storm. Those two songs are important because it makes you realise why Queen appealed to everyone. That is because using those two songs as an example, Another One Bites the Dust was not just rock, it was disco, and Crazy Little Thing Called Love was a bit of rockabilly. So what I am trying to say is that Queen had a song for everyone due to the mixing genres constantly, which resulted in Queen being appreciated by everyone, as Queen were and still are more than just a rock band. Throughout the rest of the 80s, Queen did indeed have some poor moments, although we are not going to touch on these in this video because it's not really necessary. Nonetheless, Queen still seemed to have quite a wide demographic, due to Queen's music consisting of a lot more pop than usual, with songs such as I Want to Break Free and Radio Gaga. This quite obviously allowed Queen to be accepted by more people who were into pop. Even the early 90s allowed for Queen to still keep their wide demographic. Now, Queen's demographic had changed drastically by the mid to late 90s, as times had changed and Queen only released the odd album and the occasional compilation. Queen were sort of irrelevant, as the world was making way for new groups and artists. Queen were appreciated generally by people who knew them in the 70s and perhaps the 80s, yet younger people were generally not as interested in Queen at the time, so they lost some of their demographic. The band would do something occasionally, although they were mostly inactive, which resulted in them losing a large chunk of their demographic, as they were nothing more than that group you would occasionally hear on the radio. Nothing but background noise. And this trend more or less continued, until one faithful day. 
Yes, May of 2018, Queen became big again. The Bohemian Rhapsody teaser trailer had come out, and Queen's demographic started to spread more widely again, as it did in the 80s, simply because of the fact that Queen were having a resurgence of popularity. It was like the Live Aid concert all over again. The band wasn't background noise anymore, and it was wonderful to see this as a fan. The Bohemian Rhapsody movie was a big deal to not just fans like myself, but everyone, and this made me realise that Queen now had a wide demographic again, as younger people were enjoying tracks such as We Are The Champions, Another One Bites The Dust, and so on. You all know the story by now, the film did really well and Queen's demographic once again grew, and that's really where it ends. Did you really think I was going to end the video like this? We still haven't answered the question, that being, what is Queen's demographic? And if you couldn't tell, it is hard to pinpoint what Queen's demographic exactly is. As I stated earlier, the band has been around for nearly half a century, which is a long time. And over those decades, the world's changed, music has changed, and most importantly, we have changed. Now I could just look up statistics and there I go, but you can't trust everything you see, especially on the internet. So considering what we have discussed, I would probably have to say that Queen's demographic is probably, drumroll please, everyone, and this is for two main reasons. Firstly, Queen mixed genres, and they will indeed always be known as a classic rock band. Nevertheless, I said this earlier, and that is that Queen have a song for everyone. Queen embraced disco, added a bit of opera, and even tried folk. My final point would have to be that Queen's music is timeless. That's why their music can still be appreciated even today. Queen have always been able to get admiration from people no matter their age. And this is something I'm sure we all notice, especially now as it seems everyone loves Queen. So, that is why I believe Queen's demographic is everyone, and isn't that just spectacular? I've only liked Queen in recent years, I suppose, and I was always intrigued by how everyone seems to like Queen. And that was something that surprised me. I know it's Queen and I should perhaps not be surprised that literally everyone on the planet loves Queen. However, music is probably one of the most subjective forms of art, so good job, Queen. You have a demographic that consists of everyone, which is quite a feat. Nonetheless, I have one question for you, dear viewers. What do you think Queen's demographic is? And with that all said and done, all I can say is that it still amazes me that Queen has such a wide demographic, as they are loved and adored by everyone. Hello if you're still here. I just want to say thank you for watching this video. I know I've been gone for a while, so thank you for being patient. I'll be uploading more regularly now. Anywho, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more Queen-related content coming very soon. Have a nice day, and bye.